Hello everyone! I'm spending the day with a real Stobart energy lorry. But look! Something's missing! Do you know what it is? Yes! That's it! We're missing the big trailer from the back! Let's hook it on! This is Andy and he's the driver of this lorry. Andy starts the engine by turning this key. He puts the lorry in reverse gear and carefully backs towards the trailer. Back a bit, Andy. Little bit more. There. Andy now has to do a few things to fully connect the trailer. He has to connect the hydraulic pipes and electrical lines. This means everything on the trailer can now be controlled from the cab. Andy then winds the trailer legs up. He turns off the trailer brake and fits the number plate onto the back. It's then back into the cab to test that everything's all attached. Brilliant! That looks a lot more like a lorry now. Andy, what's the best thing about driving a lorry? I really love life on the open road. You get to see a lot of interesting places around the country. Would you uh, like to see my truck? Yes, please. The front part of the lorry is called the cab. And this is where the driver sits. So, Gecko, this is my cab. It's got all the usual things that you'd expect and some special surprises too. This is a steering wheel. It goes up and down in every position that you'd want it to go. It's really, really good. Just here, this switch here, that turns all the lights on. And this here is the all-important horn. And I also have a bed in the back. It's really, really comfy. Because Andy has to do very long drives, his cosy cabin has a comfy bed for him to sleep in at night. There's all sorts of other things in here to make sure Andy's comfortable for his long journeys. There's some curtains and a reading light. Wakey, wakey, Andy! It's time to go out on the road, so before the journey, Andy walks around the lorry doing his safety checks. Wow, there's a lot of wheels to check. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14. Each Stobart lorry is unique and gets given its own name. This lorry is called Demi Nicole. Right, Gecko, we're good to go. Hop in. We're off to pick up some waste wood that would normally go straight in the bin. Stobart Energy pick up this wood in their lorries and turn it into electricity to power homes. It's amazing! Andy presses a button to open the roof sheet of the empty trailer. He then jumps back in the cab where it's safe. This very clever vehicle is called a grab and it's used to load up Andy's trailer. The driver uses the grabber to pick up lots of wood and drop it into the back. To make sure the driver of the grab can see over the top of the trailer, the cab can go up and down. Wow, I've never seen that before. It looks like we're full, so it's time for Andy to put the top back on hop back in and take this waste wood back to base.
back at base, Andy opens the back doors. He presses this button to start emptying the trailer. Inside the trailer is an amazing moving floor, which moves the wood backwards. It then tips out of the back. Once out, it's then time for another big vehicle to come along and pick up the wood. This is called a loading shovel, and it loads the wood into this big machine, which chops it into much smaller pieces. These small pieces have now become special wood fuel, which can be burned in a power station. This amazing material has come from wood that would normally have been buried underground as rubbish. The lorry is reloaded with the wood fuel and then driven to the special biomass power station. This power station can power 35,000 homes! Andy carefully reverses into the bay and tips the wood fuel off. The wood fuel travels underground, up a conveyor belt and is then burned, heating water to produce steam, a bit like a steam train. The steam turns a big turbine or wheel which creates electricity. Whoa, look at that! That isn't just any bus, that's a double-decker bus. Look, there's a downstairs and an upstairs. I'm just waiting at a bus stop for the next bus to arrive. All you have to do to catch a bus is put your hand out like this and the bus will stop. This is Brian and he's the driver of this bus. He sits in a place called the cab. Here it comes now! Brian presses the red button and the doors fold open. This bus is special because it can move up and down to let people get on more easily. Red Mechanical, where have you been on this bus? You've been playing in the junkyard? Oh well, I hope you had fun. Come on, let's get on board. You can fit up to 75 people on this double-decker bus. I think I'm going to sit upstairs to see the lovely views. Woohoo! I can see everything up here! The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long. Here we are back at the bus depot. I'll just press the bell to ask the driver to stop. Shall we have a closer look at the controls here in the cab? The driver can press all sorts of buttons to make things happen. This button controls the sign on the front of the bus, which tells people where the bus is going to. This is the ticket machine, and these screens are connected to cameras so the driver can see the passengers upstairs. These buses travel all over the city, so they sometimes get very dirty. Shall we put this double-decker bus through the special bus wash to give it a clean? It's time to use the water and brushes to clean our double-decker buses. Through this truck wash, our bus will crawl. Have you ever seen a bus so tall? Look at that! clean as a whistle. Where do you think the engine is in this double-decker bus? Surprise! It's here, right at the back. And these buses are special because they run on electricity and diesel. 
When the bus is going slowly and picking up people from bus stops, the bus uses an electric motor. This makes it much quieter than other buses. Just be careful not to fall asleep on your way home. But even these buses need to be repaired sometimes. Instead of bringing them to Gecko's garage, they're brought here to the Arriva maintenance garage where expert mechanics can repair them. Look how many buses are being worked on at the same time. This bus is having a wheel changed. And here's another bus driving into the garage. It drives in and parks over a big hole in the floor called the pit. If there's something wrong underneath the bus, a mechanic can go down into the pit and fix anything while standing underneath. Or they can use a giant hydraulic lift to lift it up and make it even taller. When everything's fixed on the bus, it's time to leave the garage and go back out onto the road to take more passengers where they need to go. I'm here at the tarmac quarry to meet an amazing digger called an excavator. Excavators are the perfect vehicles for digging up loose rock. Instead of wheels, excavators run on caterpillar tracks, which are really good at gripping onto all sorts of surfaces so that the excavator doesn't slip. That means they can climb up really steep, rocky surfaces like this. Here on this quarry, they're mining for limestone rock. But to break the huge rock faces into smaller pieces, the team from Tarmac plant explosives into the rock. Using explosives is really, really dangerous, which is why the team here are specially trained. They drill holes all the way along the rock and fill them up with the explosives. Then, it's time to detonate. Stand by. Three, two, one. Now the excavators can move in to dig up all of the loose rock. This is the boom, the dipper and the bucket. These three parts all work together to make the excavator amazing at digging. The arm can dig really deep and reach really far. Wow! I'm an excavator and digging is my job. An excavator digs The rocks and rubble from the ground Underneath the twigs There's no trouble loading And we're filling up the lorry These rocks will make a new road now We've dug them from the quarry I'm an excavator And digging is my job I'm an excavator This is Dave, the operator of this excavator. Once he's inside, he can use these two joysticks to control exactly what the arm does. He scoops up as much loose rock as possible, lifting it high into the air and drops it into this machine, which then crushes and sorts the rock into large, medium, and small sizes. This rock can then be used to build houses, 
roads and for farming. Excavators can move in amazing ways. The cab, arm and bucket can spin all the way around whilst the tracks stay still. This is called 360 degree movement. Woo! Dave, are you dizzy yet? Using the pedals in the cab, Dave can make the excavator move side to side like a crab. Left Right, left, right, and they can move forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. Excavators can also load rock into dumper trucks. Once the rock is ready to load, the dumper truck reverses into place and the bucket drops the load of rock into the hopper on the back. Good job, everyone. I'm here today at Alton Towers Resort. I'm going to have a ride on some amazing roller coasters and learn all about how they work. Roller coasters are designed for one thing, fun. No two are the same. They can do loops, twists, spins and can go really, really fast. But how do these amazing roller coasters work? Let's take a closer look. Roller coasters run on tracks like trains, but there's lots of differences too. Trains only have one set of wheels that rest on top of the track. But these cars have three sets of wheels. One on the top, one on the side, and one underneath to grip the track. This means that the roller coaster can do things that trains can't, like going upside down while still staying on the track. But the main difference between trains and roller coasters is how they are powered. Power is what makes everything start, just like batteries in a toy helps them turn on. A roller coaster car doesn't have an engine for power, so to get the car moving fast along the track, it first needs to be pulled to the top of a very big hill. On this ride called Nemesis, a long chain pulls the car all the way to the top. The car is then released and gravity brings it down the track at whizzing speeds. Gravity is an invisible force that pulls all things down towards the Earth. It's like sliding down a slide. Gravity pulls you downwards. woo -hoo! This ride, Oblivion, works in the same way. The chains slowly pull the car up to the top, which makes the people on the ride very nervous. Wow, look how high that is. This ride is a straight drop, which means there is only one way down. Scary. Some rides don't get pulled up a big hill, but instead are connected to a really long metal rope. When everyone's ready, it's time for launch. The powerful rope is reeled in and pulls really hard on the car. Ready, steady, go, go, go! The rope has launched the car along the track like a huge slingshot. This ride's called Rita and it can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 2.5 seconds. That's as fast as a racing car. When this ride needs to slow down, powerful magnets rise up and use magnetic force to slow down the car. A final set of brakes hold the train in place, bringing the ride to a stop. With all these twists, turns and loops, roller coasters have to be really safe. So all the people who work at Alton Towers work hard to make sure everyone on the ride is secure. 
by loading them onto the ride carefully and checking their seat belts. Clever computers triple check the safety of all passengers too. But roller coasters don't just carry people. At this roller coaster restaurant, it's food and drinks that ride the roller coasters. When the food is ready, they're sent down the track straight to your table. Yum, yum. I'm here at Claremont Farm today to learn all about tractors. Tractors are the most important vehicle on the farm. They help farmers like Andy and his family do really big jobs, like planting a whole field of potatoes. Let's get out on the road. Oh dear, I think I'm on the wrong tractor. Andy? Ah, here's Andy now, with a much newer blue tractor. Andy, can you show us round your beautiful tractor, please? OK, the front of the tractor. These are the heavy weights. So if we're picking up machinery at the back, we don't want the tractor to flip up. So these keep it all straight and on the ground. These are our lights. Sometimes we have to work at night and we need as much light as possible. So not only do we have the headlights, but we have spotlights at the top as well. This is the exhaust pipe. We don't want the exhaust at the back with all the machinery, so we keep it up front here, and it's high so we're not breathing in the fumes. This is the huge tractor tire with big tractor tread here. If it's really wet and muddy in the field, we need as much traction as possible because we don't want to be slipping. The back of the tractor, this is where we connect all the implements. This is called three-point linkage. One, two, three. This goes down and picks the machinery up at the back. And this is my tractor. Thanks, Andy. Tractors can drive on roads, but muddy fields are where tractors can really get to work. The huge wheels mean they'll never lose grip, no matter how sticky it gets. But that doesn't stop it being really bumpy. Whoa! In the spring, it's time for the farmers to get into the tractor and plant some seed potatoes. They drive in straight lines, creating these lovely neat rows. Imagine doing all of this planting by hand. It would take ages. But luckily, with the help of a tractor, you can plant a whole field in just two days. Deep under the ground, those little potatoes are busy spreading and growing into lots of new potatoes all throughout the year. Farmers rely on the changing of the seasons. Spring, summer, autumn and winter to help their crops grow. It's now autumn, and the leaves are falling off the trees. Out in the fields, we're going to be using the tractor to dig up the potatoes that we planted. They've been growing all summer long. You can put all sorts of different equipment onto the back of a tractor, and today the farmer's attaching a huge potato harvester. Now we're connected, it's away we go! The tractor pulls along the harvester as it pulls out the potatoes from the ground. The potatoes shoot up through the harvester and make their way down this conveyor belt where the farmer checks all of the potatoes. He throws away any bad ones. Once all the potatoes are collected, the harvester lifts them up and tips them into a trailer. The farmer then hooks up the trailer and takes the potatoes back to the farmyard. Back at base, the farmers open the trailer up and push the potatoes onto another conveyor belt that creates a massive potato mountain. Think of all the mashed potato you can make out of that. Now 
let's have a look at how you drive a tractor. So this is my tractor cab. This is my steering wheel. And all modern tractors now have power steering, which means that it's easier to turn the big wheels in the field. Here, this red lever, this means the tractor can go forward or back, forward or back. Here, this is where we turn the lights on. On this side, we have the hare and the tortoise. This is slow and this is fast. We have 15 different gears on a tractor. It's from very, very slow to fast on the road. So, do you remember seeing that big mountain of potatoes? Well, we can't see them now. And here they are. So we have to cover the potatoes with straw. The straw keeps them nice and warm to stop the frost getting in during the winter, but it also stops the light getting in. If a potato sees the light, it turns green and then we can't eat it. So it has to be completely dark. Once the potatoes are ready, they make their way to the kitchen where they're washed, peeled and chopped into chips by the chefs in the kitchen. Look at that. Fresh potatoes straight from the field and onto the plate. Yum! I've loved learning all about the different jobs that a tractor can do on the farm. Without these amazing vehicles, farmers wouldn't be able to grow all of those tasty vegetables that end up on your plate. I'm at a racetrack in Spain to meet some really fast racing cars. These Formula E racing cars are special because they're powered by electricity. This is Robin and this is Sam. They're racing drivers for the Envision Virgin Racing Formula E team. They're also teammates. Their job is to drive around the racetrack in the fastest time possible and hopefully win the race. Today, the team are testing out their cars before the racing season begins. Testing's like practice, and practice makes perfect. But first, we need to put the car together. First, the mechanics cool down the car with dry ice, which is a super cold gas. Then they place the rear wing into position. And screw into place. The front nose of the car is attached next. Once the helpful mechanics have put the car together, it's time for the drivers to get ready. Racing drivers wear these big helmets to keep them super safe when out on the track. It connects to a neck guard, which keeps the driver nice and secure. They also wear these really smart overalls, which show their team colours. I guess that means I'm in the Envision Virgin Racing team too. Then the gloves go on to protect their hands. After a quick chat with the team engineer, it's time for the drivers to strap themselves into the car. First, Sam jumps in. Then Robin. Both drivers have different helmets so the team know who's who out on the track. Robin has an orange helmet and Sam has a white one. Formula E cars have detachable steering wheels. That means they can take them off so the driver can squeeze into the car and then put them back on again, ready to race. The mechanics do some last minute checks on the car. And then, it's ready to get out onto the track. The pit crew are all part of the same team, and they check that the track is clear. The driver gives a thumbs up to say he's ready, and the crew give him the go-ahead. Both Sam and Robin leave their garages and drive down to the pit lane. We're almost ready to race.
both cars stop at the end of the pit lane and wait to be told to enter the track. If a car is going past, they can't join the track yet, as that would cause a crash. Ready? Set? Go! Ready? Set? Go! This is the bit I've been looking forward to the most. Look how fast these cars can go! In fact, the top speed of a Formula E racing car is 150 miles per hour. That's as fast as the flight dive of a Golden Eagle. Now the other teams are out on the track. It's time to see who can get the fastest time. This car's misjudged the turn. Whoa, he spun out of control. Can anyone go round this corner correctly? Here's our friend Robin. I hope he doesn't mess it up. Way, he's done it. Well done, Robin. Formula E racing cars are powered by electricity, which means they don't burn any dirty fuel. This is much better for the environment, while still having lots of fun. It also means the cars are a lot quieter than normal race cars. Not only do the drivers have to drive around the track, they always need to be checking their energy levels, car temperature, and they need to be speaking to their engineers, all whilst driving. It's a real team effort from everyone. Look, there's a live map of where everyone is on the racing track. I think we've got the call to go back into the pits. The cars slow down and enter the pit lane. The pit crew come out to greet them. Racing cars don't have a reverse gear so the team have to push the cars back into the garage themselves. Oof, that looks heavy. That's one in. And here's the other. As soon as the car enters the garage, the crew test the temperature of the car. It's a bit like when your mummy or daddy check your forehead when you're not feeling very well. It's a good way to find out how you're feeling. The car seems a little hot, so it's cooled down with these fans. I think Sam might be hot too. Formula E is a real team game, and it's not just the two drivers that do all of the work. There are more than 50 people in the Envision Virgin Racing team. There's lots of different jobs, like engineers, mechanics, or technicians. The crew have the incredibly important job of making sure the car is the best it can possibly be. And that means looking after it too. The car's worn all its tires on the track, burning all that rubber on the baking hot road so we need a fresh new set. This is the control room, home to the clever technicians and engineers. It's their job to keep a close eye on the car whilst it's on the track and come up with new ways to make the car go even faster. It's with these big headsets that they talk to the drivers when they're out on the racetrack. Here comes Sam now. This is his chance to talk to his team and chat about how the car is performing. They all work together to make the car faster so that they can win lots of races. After this meeting, it's time to make some small changes to the car. And then, 
we're back on the track. Racing cars are super speedy, powered by a battery pack. Electric cars are hard to beat, heat the wheels around the racing track. team will be testing out the cars all day on this track to make sure they are at their best when it comes to race day. I've had a great day here in Valencia with the Envision Virgin Racing Formula E team. Thanks very much to all the team. I hope you've learnt as much as I have about these clean energy racing cars. I'll see you again soon. Bye! If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!